So stable coins, privatized stable coins is what the U.S. government's going to implement. And if you're holding somebody else's stable coin, there's counterparty risk. The U.S. government is not going to hold anybody else's stable coin. They're not going to implement it, but they will allow, you know, public use of the stable coins, but they will have to be backed by U.S. treasuries or cash equivalents in bank accounts that can be audited. And so I, XRP is the intermediary bridge asset between people transacting value over the XRPL. So you're going to need other stable coins issued on the XRPL and other people that don't want to hold other people's stable coins. So as an example, if Goldman has a, st a stable coin, which they will, and Bank of America has a stable coin, which they will, and you bank at Bank of America and you're selling something to somebody at the, the banks with Goldman. When they send you that Goldman stable coin and it goes to your Bank of America account, it'll have to go through XRP to be able to settle because Bank of America is going to want to hold their own stable coin. So they will source liquidity through the DEX. They will swap it through XRP and they will settle in their own token inside their infrastructure. And that's that reduces and mitigates any counterparty risk. And that's why people would use XRP, even if stable coins get adopted at scale, because they're not going to want to hold the other counterparty stable coin. So if that transpires and we get those settlements that move through Fedwire and FedNow and settle through XRP, all of that volume moves on the network. 